And if she didn't, I'd be like, yes, queen. Yeah. This yeah. is a horrible relationship. <laughs> yeah, I would much rather and have her And all the men around you are stupid and controlling. And sexist. And yes. this book felt very Stockholm Syndrome-y to me. Even at the end, when she is separated from Flar for a while, she's like, I miss him so much, but I knew when I got back, he would shake me. I was like, why? I was like, what? Flar physically punches her in the face to keep her from crying. I'm not joking. I'm that not exaggerating. actually what happens in the book. And it's seen as like this, oh, he cares about her so much. When it's like, if your significant other, other is dramatic, crying on the verge of tears, do you seriously think punching them in the face is going to hell? No! He shakes her, screams at her, tells her, never disobey me, don't do that again. Yeah. And she's in love with him for it. And she keeps disobeying yeah. him to like save the day, and she does. She mm -hmm. does the right things, mm -hmm. but she's terrified to go back to Flar. Because she knows he's gonna hurt her. He's gonna abuse her. Hello and welcome to the Your Favorite Book Podcast. I'm Mallory. And I'm Tanner, Mallory's brother. Siblings. <laughs> we like reading books. <laughs> This week we are talking about Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. Also known as Dragon Riders of Pern. Yes. From the well-known series, mm -hmm. which is a series I was aware of, but have never read. Me too. I have heard about it quite a lot in the multiple times that I've researched Dragon Rider books to read. Mm -hmm. It was published in 1960s? Mm -hmm. 1960s? It's kind of a cult classic for Dragon Riders, I think. I don't even think it's a cult classic. I think it's very popular. Oh, okay. The author, Anne McCaffrey, I read the little bio in the uh -huh. back, is a uh, very highly regarded, very awarded. Is there a word for someone who yes. wins a lot of awards? Yes. We can't think of it, though. No. <laughs> she's won a lot of awards, so I don't think she's like an underground um, author. It's just an older book, and we're like newborn hatchling side drag babies. Note, what does cult classic mean? It means like it's really popular within its small niche. Oh! Okay, well, I did not know that was what that word meant, and <laughs> I take back that descriptor. It's a classic among Dragon Rider books. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I would say, at least. No, I... It, to my limited knowledge. It makes sense. I just... I feel like I love so many cult classics that I was always like, everybody loves them. Yeah. So I just had a misunderstanding of the word. It's a semantics <laughs> argument, doesn't matter. Um, this is the fifth book in our Dragon Riders June readathon for this year. Oh yeah. Um, you can go back and watch our other videos if you want to get a good idea of the books that we've already read and are and have reviewed for mm -hmm. this month. Um, at the end of this month we have one more week to go. We're reading His Majesty's Dragon. Yes. Um, by that, Naomi Novik. And that will be the final book in our Dragon Rider series and after that we'll do a tier list ranking of all of these books, which I am so excited for. Me too. And I have no idea what we're going to do. Yeah, I don't know how to rank them. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. I'm already thinking, like, how do I compare yeah. this book to Dragon Rider by Cornelia yes. Funk? They're so different. <laughs> yeah, they are. Oh my goodness. And their names are the most similar. What? <laughs> oh, not the author's <laughs> names. The book names. The book names, yeah. That's, that's a, These are all one Dragon Rider books. Them. They have to have like the word dragon or flight or wing in the title. Yeah, to yeah make it's any required. Sense. But Cornelia Funk got there first. Yes, yeah, she did. Um, yes. This book, wow wee wow. I feel, uh, I felt I'm a little shocked. bit. I was just going to say, I felt a little bit shell-shocked after I finished it. I was like... Well, that's something I just read. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird experience. It's a little bizarre. I, I don't know how this is regarded. Well, you I, know, like I've heard good things. Yeah. But she's not mentioned as like, uh, I don't know. She's not mentioned as often as someone like a Tolkien or an Ursula K. Yes, Gwynn. Yeah. I admittedly had very high hopes for this book. Yeah. Because so many people were like, oh, it's just a classic. It's great. You'll love it. It's like quintessential Dragon Rider series. Yeah. Um, so I I put my hopes a little bit too high. I did, well, I, okay, what did you expect this book to be like then? I think I expected it to follow more of the classic Dragon Rider tropes that we've talked about in our last uh, couple episodes. Yeah. And it doesn't follow much of them. Not really. Being like the orphan who finds a dragon egg and secures it and then slowly grows up and then learns dragon powers and then fights a war. Yeah. I mean, some of those things do get met, but it's not as clear as, like, the Aragon and the Fourth Wing and... Ascendant. Ascendant kind of type. No. Um, 
And it's kind of, I'm, I'm curious about the historical context of this book. Yeah. Like, what Dragon Rider books have come before it? Mm-hmm. I have no clue. Mm-hmm. Um, was this the first of its kind? I don't know. Yeah. Because it does, if it is the first of its kind, then you have to recognize it for its brilliance in some yeah. aspects. Yeah. Um, for me, what I expected from this book was a much younger story. To be honest. But the, I found an illegal audiobook on YouTube, and it was on kids' YouTube. It was yeah. a kids' YouTube video. This yeah. is not a kids' book. No, I don't <laughs> think so at all. I think... I wonder if there are maybe, like, junior high kids and advanced classes who are like, we want to read a different type of classic than the Beowulf or the Odyssey. Let's yeah. read Dragonflight. Yeah. I could see that. I could, too. Because the language is advanced. It is. I used my handy dandle, handy dandy, handle dandle, handy dandy Kindle highlight definition feature Ah. pretty often. Yeah, I had my phone open while I was reading and listening to the book the Uh entire time. Yeah, looking Um, up definitions. One of the words that was new to me was like abroided. Adroit. Adroit. Oh really? Yeah. She uses that word a lot. Yeah, she did use it a lot. Adroitly. I know. I was like, okay, we get it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so I was surprised by that. Yeah, me and too. Part of it, like, I guess I didn't have high expectations for this book, and I was very surprised by the writing, and mm-hmm. the first chapter is amazing. It's so great. It like, pulls you in. Yeah, it really does. There are some things about this book that I absolutely loved and thought were genius, and mm-hmm. In some aspects, that made me feel weird. I felt so <laughs> uncomfortable Yeah. At, at, during a lot of moments in this book. Yes. I don't know if I enjoyed it as much as you did. I didn't enjoy um, it very much. Okay. I really loved, okay. yeah, I really loved some of the, like, world-building aspects yeah. and the writing and the language, which yeah. is gorgeous. But the actual story, some of the characters. All and, of the characters. Yeah. <laughs> And some of the, like, uh, time-traveling stuff really didn't jive with me. I didn't, yeah, I kind of felt the same way. I, first of all, I was shocked there was time-traveling. Me too, that caught me off guard. I was like, okay, but as soon as they mentioned the time-traveling, I'm like, oh, this is how they're going to solve their problem. Yeah, it, it kinda... and as soon as that was introduced, I was like, oh, kind of let down. Yeah, yeah. But we can get into that. We should describe what this story is about. Oh, I don't even know how. So, I will start, <laughs> and then you can pick up the pieces okay, of my poor explanation. <laughs> um, the story is about a character named Lessa. I think she is the protagonist. I think so, too. She's a young 20-something um, former Orphan. royal member of this family, mm-hmm. the Ruathan hold, mm-hmm. um, within the kingdom of oh, Ruathan. Pern? Oh, no. <laughs> no, the planet is Pern. The planet is Pern. Oh, okay. Um, it's a epic fantasy. Yeah. Like, high, high epic yes. fantasy. Um, Lessa, it's a story about her basically becoming a dragon rider and saving Pern from this mysterious threat. Yeah. This otherworldly, strange thing that they hint at at the beginning of this story Mm -hmm. that only happens every 200 turns. Yeah. And turns, I'm assuming, is their word for a year or an epoch. They did. There's a nice, I will say, there's a nice glossary in the back with character names. Yeah, there is. Dragon names and terms like that. Because she uses a lot of that stuff, Uh which is so cool. Yeah, I liked it. And what I love in an epic fantasy. Yeah, and she did what Maze Runner couldn't, which was make up new swear words that aren't stupid. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, She, I think, is an expert world builder. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of her strong suits. I think so, too. I really, really loved I felt immersed right away. And I, I really enjoyed the mystery of this, like, comet some sort of thing that rotates around star. their earth that when it gets too close threads that are like fungi spores sprinkled i don't know yeah it was so interesting. They, they call that threat the threads capital mm-hmm. t mm-hmm. and we don't know what it is until the end of the book yeah and you build up this like mysterious feeling all the way up until the final climax yeah and the build-up is so much better than the actual satis- uh, like resolution yeah but the uh, that the intention is there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is successful in like gripping you yeah. into this story. Yeah. Because the kingdom of Ruatha has fallen, mm-hmm. and there's this terrible overlord who has conquered all seven holds within the planet of Pern, mm-hmm. and um, 
Lessa is going to become a dragon rider to save all of Pern. Yeah. But her first intention is to save Ruatha because mm -hmm. her family was murdered. She has this horrible, tragic past. Yeah, there's a little baby revenge arc in the first eight chapters. Which I really like. Yeah, and it does get resolved. It doesn't get and just it's dropped and abandoned. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I would say the first act was my absolute favorite part of this book. Me too. Easily. Yeah. Easily. And we'll talk about that, like how that arc actually works mm -hmm. and why it's satisfying. And at first I was asking myself, hmm, would it be better if Fact remained as like an antagonist oh, throughout this entire yeah, story? Yeah. And there is a possible like way to do that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But instead they kill him off pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and kind of easily too, I thought. Yeah, but I think the purpose of that is to make it feel like Lessa becoming a dragon rider feels like a satisfying achievement. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in order for her to become a dragon rider, she has to kill facts, basically. Yeah, yeah. To be um, able to, like, claim her... She is able to step up and be like, I'm the last Ruathan, and I claim my place on this. Hold. Hold mm -hmm. on this place. Whatever. <laughs> yes. And... The rest of the story, I think, as a consequence of facts being taken away, kind of, like, loses its momentum a little bit. Yeah, it's it's interesting. We have a very clear antagonist in that first arc, and then once he's gone, the antagonist is kind of the threat of the threads. Yeah. But most of the characters in the world don't believe that there's a threat there, so it kind of feels less important and less dramatic. Yeah, and I think the... Uh, characters that don't believe in the threads anymore, mm -hmm. they become the new antagonist. Yeah. And it's an interesting enough conflict. Yeah. Um, but it's just not quite the same. It doesn't feel as powerful or personal. Yeah. And even overcoming those non-believers mm -hmm. is kind of resolved quickly. Yeah. And it's also like, if, if, if your biggest threat is someone saying, I don't believe you, and the characters literally are like, okay, Mm -hmm. there's, and they don't do anything about it. There's, okay, th so the threat is non-existent at this point? Like, there's no, there, the antagonism isn't as complex as when it was Fax who was like, I own all of you people. And I control your lives. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would say there is, there is a degree of that, but I think the way, the problem is that the way that that's resolved is not very satisfying. Mm -mm. And we'll get into it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I keep saying that. <laughs> But we should talk about uh, the introduction to the story then. Yes. Um, so Lessa, she is... It's a um, multiple POV book. Yeah. It's omniscient third person. Sometimes it'll jump from like one paragraph to the next from one character's head to another, mm -hmm. which is definitely not the contemporary style of no. writing no. that exists. It is... I mean, that's what Tolkien would do too. Yeah. So it comes from, it's like a relic of its era. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, it was a little bit confusing at times. You'd yeah. be reading like a passage from Floor's point of view, and then literally the next paragraph is from Flan's, what's his Fnor. brother's name? Fnor's Fnor. point of view. Uh -huh. um, and it was a little it would bit be, Yeah, sometimes it would be a little bit clunky. And, it, and then the other issue I had with that writing style thing is every now and then you would get an internal monologue. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, internal monologues are usually italicized. The, yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Flaxes, I mean, facts. floors, <laughs> floors. Okay, can we talk about the names? Yes! There's fax, floor, fnor. Urgul. Urgul. Nen -nen. There's a lot of weird There's names. There's a lot of weird names. And a lot of, all of the men Dragon Rider names are of the style of capital, first letter, apostrophe, three more letters. Yeah. So. And the name of the convention <laughs> is interesting. It has a world building explanation. Yeah. You know, it's a part of like what makes Anne McCaffrey such a great world builder mm -hmm. if she considers those details and there is yeah. a good reason for it i can't remember what it is because it's like an offhand comment yeah it's like the first letter of the father's name the last three letters of the woman's name yeah. of the mother's name but they're a little strange and hard to pronounce it, and also you have half brothers so their names are very similar <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it was sorry i interrupted confusing. you oh no you're fine you get like an internal monologue yes. that's supposed to be yeah. italicized. Floors was italicized like once. Mm hmm. And all the rest of the time it's not italicized. So you'll be reading an omniscient third person, and all of a sudden you'll get a. Uh, um, you you get on your drag, it's back, and then you do this, you thought, he thought, and then it kind of was just like a little bit of a. Uh, 
Oh, okay, now I'm back on. I had to read that paragraph three times to understand yeah. who was speaking and who was thinking and what was going on. It, yeah. It just was a little bit clumsy at times, I think. Yeah, I think that's just because of the time that it was written in, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if it seriously was like one of those early books that was blazing new ground for high epic fantasy. Yeah. Writing styles hadn't really, I mean... They've changed, obviously. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a historian of this sort of stuff. <laughs> but to me, it felt like I was reading an older book. I've read The Hobbit. Yeah. You know, I've read Ursula K. Gwynn. I've read Dune. Mm -hmm. And it has a similar writing style. Yeah. Well, that's me. good to know that it's more purposeful yeah. than just, like, not practiced, I guess. Yes. I think, like, writing styles have changed, obviously, over mm -hmm. time to the point where it's, like, far more digestible. Yeah. And that's something that I prefer personally as a consumer. Mm -hmm. I loved the writing in this. Mm -hmm. At times it was gorgeous. Yeah. And like mind-blowingly good. Mm -hmm. Like she has such a powerful grasp of language. Yeah. It's the type of writing where it's like, oh, 60 years ago, every child could read this and understand it. We were so much smarter back then <laughs> as a society. It does feel like that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like today we read... Oh, I don't want to talk bad about anyone else's writing. But, you know, Brandon Sanderson is not a wordsmith. And yeah. I love Brandon Sanderson's work. Yeah. But if he were spending as much time to craft sentences as beautifully as something in Dragonflight, then his books would be like a fourth of the length. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's very boiled down and concise. And she's, you can tell she's perfectly picking every single word. Yeah. Which is good. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> but mm, you have to pay so much attention to this book. Yeah. Like... I was gripped to this tale, not in a good way, but because I felt like I had to pay attention to understand what was going I on. I felt a little bit like I was too stupid to understand yeah, it sometimes. Yeah, me too. And I'm glad that you said that first. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I was reading this and I would be like, I'm sorry, is this just going over my head completely? Yeah. I think I'm reading along. I was listening to the audiobook while reading the page, I did the exact too, same thing. Because yeah. I was like... I I don't know. I needed the extra guidance, I felt. Yeah. It was... Sometimes it was so dense and conversations would happen so quickly. Yes. That you felt like you had to play catch up to understand what was happening. Mm -hmm. And part of it is like her skill as a writer. Once again, if you understand what she's saying, then it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Like she adds context to dialogue in such a efficient way. I will say I had a hard time understanding the dialogue. I did too. Sometimes some of the conversations, I was like, I can't tell. Yeah. I can tell she's trying to say something with subtext, and I could not pick it up half the time. Me too. I and it took me like several rereads. Yeah. And I'd be like, I think I know what she's trying to get at here. Yeah. And some of it, you kind of <laughs> had to just hang on for dear life until the end of the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd be like, oh, okay. that's the resolution of the scene. <laughs> Maybe I can like piece it together by going totally, backwards. Totally. Which is like... It's a good credit to her ability to write fantastic scenes, but I don't think your audience should have to work that hard to understand every single scene that goes on. It depends. Yeah, it's I, that's a personal choice. Yes, as personal taste. I agree. Um, I would much rather read something like Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funk, where the writing isn't great, mm -hmm. but I understood what was happening. I didn't have to like <laughs> turn my brain on to like 110% to understand what was happening. The whole time I was reading this book, like I seriously was like, I think I need a brain break yeah. from reading this book. <laughs> and I think it, the story, because it's not like amazing in my opinion, I agree. it kind of hampers I agree. the writing style. Well, spoiler alert, we don't even get them, get to watch them defeat the threads at the end of the book. I know. The and book we'll get ends to that. before the final battle. Yeah. Okay, can we talk a little bit about the world building? <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. So she establishes a great sense of mystery, mm -hmm. which we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. That's one of my favorite things in a world building book. Yes. Or in a fantasy book, yes. I'm sorry. Or a sci-fi book mm -hmm. is the world building. Yes. If you can establish a sense of mystery in more than one way, then you've got me hooked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was by... The beginning of this book. Me too. I loved it. Because they hint towards the mystery of the threads. Mm -hmm. And every 200 turns, they're supposed to come and attack the planet Pern. Yeah. But they haven't come in 400 years. Mm -hmm. So what's going on there? That's your first world building mystery. Yeah. And then uh, they, you get a POV from another main character, Flar, 
who's kind of like your typical fantasy hero. Mm-hmm. He's the male protagonist. He's the good guy. He's the yeah. chivalry, he's chivalrous really, one. He's really, really smart, and he always makes the best battle decisions. He's super wise, uh-huh. but he's also a douchebag, in my opinion. I agree, 110%. But when we get a, a POV chapter from him, I was so invested in the story. I really liked his the voicing that she had for both Lessa and Flower. They both felt very distinct, and mm-hmm. I liked both of them. So did I. At first. Yes. Um, but Flar, he's a dragon man. Mm-hmm. And he believes in the history of the dragon riders and why it's important to uphold their traditions. Yeah. So they sing ballads and pass down tales and myths. And they mm-hmm. help future dragon riders survive. Yeah. Because 200 years is a long time between disasters. Mm-hmm. Right? America is like 200 years old, people say, all the time. Well, yeah. that's a long time ago to us. Yeah. But well, when you're reading there's... in this book, you're like, how could people forget about how to handle the threat of the threads yeah after only 200 years yeah i thought that was interesting too because then that means there's whole generations of dragons and dragon men that live with no side effects or no no events Mm -hmm. at all they're just regular dragons and um flar and his brother fnor they walk into fax's castle Mm -hmm. to do search capital s and we don't know what that is either yeah and they're in inspecting his castle and every castle is built inside of a mountain on purpose Mm -hmm. and they're seeing things like algae and vines growing on people's homes Mm -hmm. and they're like that's a sin right yes and i was like "Ooh, that's so cool yeah it's why yeah why can't they have green things growing near their houses and how do they survive in this place Mm -hmm. like do you have farmers have to travel like miles just to get to their places of work and then they bring the crops back and they eat them really quickly because they don't want green things yeah. growing in their habitations yeah like that world building stuff is so juicy mm-hmm. i also really enjoyed the world building around lessa's character how she had some sorts yeah. of innate magic that weren't really defined or explained that well but she could communicate with beasts kind of and she could she could influence manipulate people. people yeah like emotions or stuff like that like i really enjoyed that too i wanted to yeah. understand more about that we didn't really get that many good answers on that front no but it was still interesting in another another it was aspect super of like oh what kind of magical world is this who has powers who doesn't mm-hmm. all of those details things like you can't let green things grow where you live. Yeah. And Lessa having these strange powers and communicating with a watch wear, which mm-hmm. is this weird dragon thing. Mm-hmm. And she's like trying to disguise herself as a servant and we mm-hmm. don't know why. And she has these weird powers. Yeah. And she's thwarting Fax's plans for Ruatha. Yeah. She like looks out at all these fields and they're all dying. And she's like, it's all because of me. And you're like, ooh, I wonder how. Yes. Like, she is so good at hooking you into this Mm -hmm. story and making you feel immersed in this world. Yeah. And part of it is in service to her, like, understanding of language. Yeah, for sure. It is done so efficiently Mm -hmm. and so beautifully. Like, these first two or three chapters, like I said, are just amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was, like, delicious to read. It was. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed taking my time reading it. Yeah. Like, I really wanted to actually sit down and read the book. I don't, uh-huh. I have a hard time actually physically reading books unless I'm super yeah. invested, which is why I love audiobooks so much. Mm-hmm. But something like this, where it's like the world is so gripping and interesting, yeah. you really do love taking your time trying to figure out everything she's trying to say. Yeah, well, and I feel like if you read this book a second time through, there would be so much yeah. more that you could gather with the knowledge that you have at the end of the book mm-hmm. because she's so purposeful with putting everything together. Yeah, it felt meticulous. Mm -hmm. I felt the same way that I did reading something like Tams and Murr's Locked Tomb series, Mm -hmm. to a degree, you know? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I have to reread all of the Locked Tomb series because there's so much that I missed. Yeah, yeah. And you feel like the the author has so much control over what they have built. Yeah. And they're trying to explain it to you. Yeah, it makes you wonder, it makes you wonder how long... And McCaffrey's been thinking about this, thought about this yeah. project before she actually worked on it, and then how long it took her to work on it, too. Yeah. It feels to me like this book was a gigantic Renaissance painting. Yeah, it does. You know? It does. Compared to, and I'm not, like, talking down on other books that we've read in this series, they feel a bit more like, I wrote this book in six months. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about it for a little while. Yeah. And it's a good story. The world building is good, but it doesn't feel as mysterious and lifelike yes. as Pern. Yeah. 
like Pern to me feels strange and magical and mysterious. Yeah, it's really interesting. I I, I also just loved the use of like celestial objects and stuff that you can't control and having to find order and balance within those limits mm -hmm. of like the threat of the threads and stuff like that. Yeah. I think we should talk about like why we were so invested in that first aspect and how it fell apart. Yes. For me, I think it's because the story starts to come apart yeah. and I haven't completely figured out why that is for me. We've kind of touched on it briefly. Uh-huh. Um, Flar, who's a dragon man, mm -hmm. he's looking for a woman to be their next queen. Yeah. That's what search is. Yes. Um, and you get the sense that this society is kind of primal. Like there's yeah. a strict gender binary. Yes. The and men are in charge and the women are the queens. Yes. And their duty is to read the books. Repopulate the earth. Repopulate oh, the yes, earth. Both and read the books. Well, no. No, 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 not even read. There's a sentence in there. Oh, yeah, they when, can't read. Yeah, yeah. They're not it is, taught to read. It is a world-building fact that women can't read. Yeah. And the man has a note for Lessa, and he doesn't know to give it to the queen or the guy, because he's like, women can't read. She mm -hmm. knows how to read. She's better because than every other woman. Because she's the secretary. Uh, yeah, Like, I if you're know. a queen in this world, then... You don't know how to read, but you are supposed to take care of, like, all the food, the supplies and stuff while the dragon man goes and does all the manly yes. stuff. Yes, yes. That's the assumption. That's the impression that yes. I get. Yes. I, I thought it was interesting that they were, like, hyping up this whole werewoman queen thing, and then she doesn't do anything. She still... What do you mean by that? I feel like she was just as useful as all of the other women who weren't bonded to a dragon and who just cooked in the kitchens all day. I felt like she didn't do that much. Except she having did, a dragon that end. could give yeah. birth to yes. other dragons. Yeah, it just it just felt weird. Yeah. I felt weird about a lot of aspects about this story. <laughs> I know, it is strange. <laughs> but... Because, okay, so to give a little bit more context into the world building here, mm -hmm. the society in Pern is that the dragon riders have their own little kingdom in the where, the mm -hmm. W-E-Y-R. Yes. It's kind so of like uh, this dragon, dragon place. Den, dragon den. Dragon den. Of, yeah. And I imagine it's at the center of this kingdom because that's how my brain works. Yeah. And then all around it are these kingdoms that are built to support the where. Mm -hmm. And when the dragon riders were first established, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. They were built that way to protect the people against the threats. Yeah. And it was this noble thing, mm -hmm. and everyone saw the value in dragon riders. Yeah, and in return, the people surrounding the wares would give tithes and support the dragon yeah. riders in payment for the dragon riders, protecting them from all the threats. Yes. But over time, the kingdoms have forgotten, the common folk have forgotten how important the dragon riders were to protecting their kingdoms. Mm-hmm. So that's why Fax, who's conquered all these other kingdoms, a hold master, a hold lord is supposed to only watch over one hold. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's got all seven, seven. I think, yeah. He's this big bad guy. He's the Darth Vader. Yeah. And he doesn't respect the dragon riders at all. In mm -hmm. fact, he wants to get rid of them because he doesn't see their purpose anymore. Yeah. They are just, because they ride dragons, they think they are better than him. And they demand so many tithes. Mm -hmm. And so the dragon riders... They're trying to reassert their authority. At least that's what Flar wants to do. But yeah. he is not the king yeah. of the wares. Yeah. Like, there's so much world-building stuff going on there's in this a story. Lot. There's a lot. And it's hard to explain all of it. Yeah. Because even reading it, I was confused. I was too. <laughs> because she just throws all this information yes. at you yeah. so quickly. And you have to catch up. Mm -hmm. And the language is also pretty advanced, so it's kind of hard to understand what she's saying. <laughs> yeah. And the pace is blistering. Oh, God. And the characters aren't super likable. I had so, much, so many <laughs> issues with the pace of this story, actually. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a disappointing read for me because I was so high on it in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And then it, it just, just kind of, kind of slowly plummets. It's, it's kind of bizarre. There's a lot of things in this book that reminded me of books that I loved, mm -hmm. like... Ascendant, which is the first book that we did for our readathon, mm -hmm. um, the societal stuff, right? Where it's yeah. like the common folk have forgotten the importance of the dragons, mm -hmm. and the dragons and their dragon riders have believed that they deserve the power they were given. Yeah. They were divinely appoint appointed for that. Yeah. And I feel like Ascendant does a better job of fleshing out those aspects of those mm -hmm. societies. Yeah, I will say Ascendant also helps you sympathize with the dragon riders more 
than the common folk. Mm -hmm. Versus in this book, sometimes I kind of felt like, yeah, usurp the dragon riders. They're doing They're nothing. Awful. Like, they kind of don't do anything other than do protect the threads. If there was more that the dragon riders could do to help in yeah. between those times, I would have been more sympathetic to the dragon riders. Right. And them demanding all the tithes and holding the women hostage. <laughs> they felt like, like the bad guys I know. to me. I was like... <laughs> Storm the they castle! Have a, they have really good reasons to hate the they dragon do. riders. They um, And there is a bit of an explanation to that. So yeah. the, um, our ghoul is kind of like the second antagonist after Fax. Yeah. He's the le where leader. He's like your classic old man who, who like wants women in their place and men in their place and... But the traditions aren't traditions anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it was a weird juxtaposition of traditional old man and not traditional old man. Oh, between facts of and just, Argul? No, in Argul as one character to me. Oh, I see. Because I expected himself. him to be like, withhold the traditions. Yeah. And he did to a point. I guess he didn't like the lore. Yeah. No, no, no. He... Sorry, this probably doesn't even make any sense. No. Well, <laughs> Argul, I expected him to be more like a character from Ascendant who would be leave that they deserved the power that they had and would lord it over regular folk. Yes. But our yes. ghoul does not. Yes. He holds to the traditions, but he wants to seclude the wear from mm -hmm. the other kingdoms because mm -hmm. he's like, we're kind of obsolete now that the threads have stopped coming. Have stopped coming. Uh -huh. And he just enjoys being in charge. Yes. He wants to keep peace between the, all the holds mm -hmm. so he doesn't stop facts from conquering the other kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Um and he just wants to play games. The games. Yeah, right? which they never explain what those are. I'm assuming they're hunting and war games to prepare and train dragons and keep them occupied. Yes, but since there are no threats facing the dragons, they just compete with each other. Yeah. And I thought that would play a bigger role in this story. No. Nope. It's like the dragons are obsessed with the games and they're like distracted from the threads. Yeah. Never comes into play. No, even the dragons are like, these games are boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, there's just weird things that are it kind of kind of dropped. feels disconnected. It kind of felt like they really yeah. wanted the story to be about... Uh, I don't even know It felt know like what. they were kind of forcing the story to be about, like, let's prepare for the th threat of the threads and disregarding, like, how people within the where the wear would react to everything changing suddenly like yeah. that. You know, like, everyone wants to rebel against Argul. Like, Argul is the only guy who likes the games. Mm-hmm. And ignoring the threat of the threads. Yeah. And everyone else is like, we want to get back to fighting the threads. It's like, what? I thought you all just wanted to keep playing in the games. It's and so weird. And then when changes do happen, everybody's like, yeah! Rebellion! There's no... But there's no proof of the threads coming back. No. Like I said earlier, the mm -hmm. way that they overcome that obstacle is too easy. I would expect there to be a bit more of a challenge for Flar, the main character, mm -hmm. and Lessa to overthrow our ghoul yeah. to prepare their people for the threads. But it happens so easily. Our ghoul, mm -hmm. he's ousted right away, and we can get into that. And um, they start preparing for the threads, and that's like the final act of the story. Yeah, and everybody's just like, oh, wow, yeah, your maps are great. Mm -hmm. Your maps tell us everything we need. Your maps. Our ghoul just your rolls maps. over. <laughs> Yeah. He, like, doesn't try to fight back to win, like, his power, to, to get mm -hmm. back to, like, be being the wear leader again. Yeah, we get we get a small couple paragraphs from his kind of point of view. And yeah. he's, like, he'll play the game that Floor played. He'll wait. Mm -hmm. He'll wait until something happens and then step up again. It's I'm like, like, that's so boring. Bleh. Okay, what? Why? <laughs> Why not make him just, like, do something drastic? Yeah, or even if he is waiting, be like, I'll slowly plant seeds of deceit among his trustworthy men. Yeah. And I'll play the slow game purposefully with things along the way instead of just him being like, okay. Yeah. Why don't you make him, like, the game master, <laughs> right? Yeah. Where maybe there's, like, a character from Harry Potter who's, uh, I can't remember his name. Um, they do this, like, the Quidditch is a, oh, such yeah, a big yeah, deal yeah. in Harry yeah. Potter, right? There's, like, a game master in, like, the fifth book mm -hmm. who everyone admires. It's, like, this former great player, mm -hmm. and they all listen to him be like, Ah, don't worry, the Voldemort isn't real. Yeah. Don't worry about these threats. You could do a similar thing here. Yeah, you could. And she and even be so sets much it up. Better. Like, it, you could just easily put that in, and it wouldn't... Yeah. <laughs> he could use his influence as, like, everyone admires him as this great 
player in the games. Mm -hmm. And he would convince people, like, the threads aren't a real threat. Besides, times are tough. People need a healthy distraction. Like, the games. Like, yeah. the, ga the gauntlet is coming up. Yeah. We need to prepare for the games. Not for this. Flower, don't you want to play in the games? <laughs> yeah. But there's nothing. Like, yeah. There's, there's nothing stopping them from preparing for the threads. Everybody just goes along with it. Yeah. There's nothing sacrificed to do that either. No. They're like, oh, good thing we have nothing to do. Yeah. I don't know. We have all so this time weird. on our hands. There's a lot of sitting and waiting. There's mm -hmm. a lot of the dragons being hungry during winter and nobody getting food. Yeah. We even have like a whole time skip of three years. There's a lot of time skipping, which is fine. Yes. It's just what I prefer is something like, I love Known of the Ninth to death. Mm -hmm. I love that book because it's like day one, days one through seven, and it's like 900 pages. Yep. And it's awesome. Yes. I love a paste, a story paced like that. Yeah. Well, my, my issue with the time skip was I didn't realize time had passed. Yeah. Until someone was like, oh, yeah, the sun is three years old now. I'm like, that's a weird way to tell me that three years went past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could talk briefly just to mention, like, how Urgul is overthrown by Flar. It's weird, and it will be a good segue into my biggest complaint about this book, which is the relationship, the romantic interest. Oh, there's um, not... I don't even want to call it that. I know. Flar is the romantic interest, I guess, because yes. Les is kind of the main character of the yes. story. It's really about her journey. Mm-hmm. Um, Lessa... But oh a little bit gosh, of a world-building explanation. Even... <laughs> we should start. Yeah. So the reason why they were looking for a queen... Yeah, or a werewoman. Yes, um, is because their previous queen was old, fat, and stupid, yeah. Jorah. And they, yep. they mention her at the very beginning of this book, and it's a nice and medias rest moment where it's mm -hmm. like, I feel like you need to catch up to what happened before the story began. Mm -hmm. The reason why they began the search. Mm -hmm. She, we don't know what happened to her. Did she die? I think she died. They Did never really like, actually say. Go away. What think, happened to her dragon? Did well, they explain it? I think she, from the world building that they set up, if a dragon rider dies, their dragon goes in, in between, between, which is a space in between time and space, basically. Yeah. So I'm assuming she died and her dragon went between, but they never okay. say that that happens. Yeah. I mean, that's just a good example of like how dense this book is yeah. and I and it's like not really explained in detail what's happening or what has happened to no. the events and the characters in this book no like anyway um the queen is gone mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't know how know. and so they're looking for a new queen yeah and Flar and Fnor and all these other male dragons all of the dragon riders I'm assuming are yes. male yeah, I think, yes. Except for the werewomen. They're mm -hmm. much more rare. Yes, I think right? there's only one werewoman for each hold. dragon horde hold. I think? I don't know. I think? There's more werewomen in the village, basically, but they I would aren't like her bonded just to, to a that. dragon. Like, why can't Lessa be, like, your Watson character? And she could ask Flora these questions. Well, she even asks, and they're like... We're not telling you. Don't you don't get to know because you're a girl. Yeah, that's actually an important plot point too later on. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Where she's like, I'm trying to overthrow Urgul, and Flar and I are on the same team, but he's so slow. So she tries to do her own thing, thwarting mm -hmm. Urgul's authority in the same way that she did Faxes. Yeah. By being cunning and like setting these traps. Yeah. And it can influencing people with her Jedi mind tricks. Yes. Um, and then Flower's like, you dumb woman, you didn't wait. She's like, you didn't tell me to yeah, wait. Yeah, she's literally like, you're telling me that we're in this together and you won't tell me a single thing. She's like, you want to throw over Urgul, right? And Fnor is like, yeah, but not the way that you're trying to do it. And she's like, why don't you tell me any of this stuff? And he's like, Goodness. because... Because. <laughs> and that's it. Yes. And then there's like, uh, it's confusing. It is. It's not great. Even that dialogue, that conversation, we're making it sound so much simpler than it is. Everyone speaks in like old English. Even the conversation itself, the dialogue, I think it's, I think it's good. I, <laughs> but it's hard to understand at times. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't like the dialogue. And okay. that's coming from someone who has read a lot of old plays and old old plays. Because it's difficult to interpret characters' motivations from what they're saying. Yes. Like, uh, I don't know. It's hard. I just also, 
Anyway, we were talking about they need a new queen. They need a new queen. There's a queen egg that is about ready to hatch. And, and they're so like, they're looking we for need a woman, a, to, a be woman to be that dragon queen. rider. Yeah. The werewoman for the dragon queen. Yes, yes. And it took me so long to understand that. Like, oh, they would yeah. keep referring to it in the beginning of the book. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with, like, not understanding some of those things until later on. Yeah. Right? But it was kind of frustrating for how long it took me to understand. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jorah was the former queen. Yes. It took Her a long time. Her dragon went away. Like, at and, least 40% yeah. in. And Lessa is the replacement. Yes. Obviously. She's going to yes. be the new queen. So, she... Her dragon hatches for her happens like that, basically. Mm-hmm. And it is actually not that bad of a scene. I'm making it no, seem... No, it, it was interesting. I liked that scene. But this is one of those, like, traditional dragon rider tropes we were talking about. We're looking for, in these type of books, mm-hmm. are a strong connection between the dragon and its rider. Mm-hmm. And the stories about those two growing together. Yeah. As a pair to defeat the evil bad guy. Yeah. Right? I feel like that did not happen that much no. in this book. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. I love Dragon Rider by Cornelia Fuke. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really feel like a Dragon Rider book, though. No, it doesn't. And neither the, does this. No, it doesn't. The humans just happen to ride the dragons. Well, even in, there's a big battle scene later on, and mm-hmm. we get Flar's point of view, and he even is, like, noticing that all the dragons are doing all the work instinctively, and the riders are just <laughs> in Hanging the way. On. Like, they, yeah. they literally get killed, and the dragons are like, Bleh. Like, oh well. He literally is like, "Wow, we're so useless." Like, yeah, what? we've had no training for four hundred years. It's and like, what was the point what? of the games? Yeah. Anyway, at least in Fourth Wing, she does some of that stuff where it's like the training for the riders is specific to the way that they will train with their dragons. Yeah, yeah, I did like that. They also actually yeah. showed any of the games. Yes, they did, and they showed the training. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, Lessa becomes the Dragon Queen. Mm-hmm. And her purpose is to help her dragon grow up and be safe and happy. Yes. So that her dragon queen can give birth to a huge clutch of dragons. Yes. And yes. so um, Urgul was previously chosen as were leader because his bronze dragon... Was uh, mates. Was mates with... The last the previous dragon. The previous dragon. The previous dragon queen. Yeah. And then so, when she went away, they need a new dragon queen. Yeah. And then the... The way that the next leader is chosen is by whatever dragon can mate with the queen. Yes. Yes. And they say that it's usually not a contest of skill. It's usually chosen by the were. Yeah. Yeah. The were's elders and leaders. Yeah, like who collectively is going to win. It's like it's like rigging the Hunger Games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So last, so the last time they had a dragon queen, Urgul, he wasn't nearly as smart or as strong as Falar. But he was chosen because Flar was only 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And so his dragon failed to mate with Jorah's dragon. Yeah. And when he found Lessa, he's like, here's my chance to become king again. Yeah. Right? And I'm only realizing this right now as I'm talking about it out loud. Uh Uh-huh. That that was his intention when he first was on search and why he was so excited to find Lessa. Yeah, it's creepy and weird. Well, (laughs) we should explain why it's creepy and weird. It's creepy and weird. Because. Because... I don't even know how to explain that whole section of this book, to be honest with you. Okay. They're like, they're like, there's this whole huge societal celebration almost about the mating of these dragons. Mm -hmm. And she's, her golden dragon is the only female dragon. Yeah. And she has to drink blood, not eat, because if she eats... The dragon. Yeah, the dragon. Sorry. The dragon, if the dragon eats too much, she'll become... Too heavy and gluttony, gluttonous. She won't be able to fly. And she won't be able to fly as high. The higher your dragon can fly, the better the clutch of eggs will mm-hmm. be, and the better your mate will be. Because if the mate can keep up, it's a better dragon. Yeah. And I didn't mind some of those. Yeah. Speculative evolution explanations. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like when you when your dragons are super hungry and they just want to kill and eat everything, that means they're super horny, right? Yeah. So the humans are helping the dragons like be more prosperous and stronger by using their telepathic link with their dragon to force them not to eat their kills. Yes. Even though Les's dragon is so hungry. Yeah. She kills four deer and just drinks its blood because Lessa tells it, don't eat the deer. Yeah. Because she has to bone. It's right. so weird. It, that stuff I'm fine with. But it's yeah. the connection that the human has with her dragon. It's yeah. similar to Fourth Wing, right? Yeah. Where Violet... Every time her dragon gets horny, she gets horny. I hate it. Why <laughs> like, do people it, it do that? It happens here too. Why? I don't understand why you would pick that to happen. You could write whatever <laughs> you wanted, you guys. Yeah. You don't have to write that. 
I know. It takes, it's so weird. It takes all of the romance out of a relationship. And yeah. It makes it feel really strange. It's and weird. Really rapey. It does. Well, I mean, the text even comments on it. Like, it's so weird. So, but her dragon mates with Flars. Flars of dragon. Course. Duh. Flar's dragon is the strongest. Yeah, which is good because then Flar gets to be the way where leader, the the <laughs> dragon king, and she's the dragon queen. And she doesn't even really like him. No, she actually I think actively hates him at the beginning. And throughout most of this book. And he also up until this moment. He also refuses to call her by name. He calls her girl. Mm-hmm. He is. He's so he's bad. Horrible. His character is so bad. And it's like I don't know what to say because this is written by a woman. And maybe the excuse you can make is, well, it's written by a woman. She can't do anything that's misogynistic. I feel like it's or, pretty darn misogynistic. <laughs> or she's doing it intentionally, to writing comment. a misogynistic society like this. I don't know why you would do that. Please, someone inform me why you would do that. But the problem is, Lessa, when it comes to her romantic relationships, feels powerless. Mm -hmm. The men can be as polyamorous as they want to, and there's no problems with that. Mm -hmm. Even Flowers like, sleeping around with other people when he's obsessed with Lessa. Yeah. Which is weird, but, but not not immoral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. You That's can just do that. That's just dating, right? But, yeah. But it's the fact that he feels like he has ownership over her. Yes. Because their dragons are paired. Mm hmm And when they first pair, he is holding Lessa because she's, like, physically overcome by this dragon desire to bone. It's so and he's like, don't leave her mind. You have to stay there the entire time. Yeah. And then they kiss. But the way that she describes the kiss is like flour mashing her it's, face it's into his. It's never described as anything great, you guys. No. It's not. And so I assume that they have sex after that. Yes, it's, right? it's implied. It's, not, it's a fade to black scene. It's yeah. it's not descriptive. It's not like fourth wing style. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> descriptive. I don't want any of that, actually. I know. But like at this point in the story, I was like, is there... Am I being tricked into liking this thing? Because I don't like it, right? At this mm -hmm. point in the story. Yeah. I'm like, I don't like any of these characters, except for maybe Lessa. Yeah. I like Fnor. I liked Fnor. I liked Fnor too, but he doesn't play a role in this thing. No. He's just Flar's lapdog. Yes. And he's okay with that. He likes yes. being underneath Flor yeah. Flar's boot. Yes. The story isn't super interesting because the plot is kind of boring. Yeah, we also add time travel halfway through. Yeah. I, the only reason why I kept reading is, well, for this podcast. Yes. But the only reason why I would have kept reading is because I want to know what the threads are. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's, there has to That's be a good the, reason. the only thing compelling me to read as well. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, that's how Flar overthrows Urgul, and it's the moment he's been waiting for. And maybe that's why he didn't tell Lessa, hey, wait a second, don't overthrow Urgul the same way you did Fax. Yeah. Because you and I, we're going to have to, I'm going to force you to sleep with me. Yes. Because our dragons have sex. It's so weird, you guys. It's so weird. <sighs> Should we mention what Flar says about that? Yes. Trigger warning for non-consensual sexual relationships. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned that earlier. <laughs> um... After that happens, a couple chapters later... They sleep together in the same bed. Yeah, yeah. And we don't know if Lessa really likes her. Like, there's no, no romance, there's no there's, character development there's here. There's no chemistry, there's no... There's no relationship. It's the opposite of chemistry. There's no... Yeah, it's it's bad. It, it's like Stockholm Syndrome and he, stuff. And he even says... Like, in, in the text, it's like, he wishes she wasn't a virgin for the first time because it was a very violent experience for her. And then he says he'd done his best to be, like, a kind and considerate, considerate lover. lover after that. But let's call it what it is. It was basically rape. They yeah. say that in the text! It's almost verbatim. Like, they <laughs> don't have... I assume that they didn't have sex outside of their dragons having sex. But what he's saying is the only times they did have sex is when she felt compelled to sleep with them because their dragons were, were doing it. Yes. There's so many issues there. And he's like, I want to have sex with her like outside of the those times. Yeah. But she's not willing. Well, plus he can't help but, I don't know, beat her. That's the other thing, too. He's yeah. like, he's like, oh, she smiles so cute at her dragon. I wish she would smile me, at me like that. And then he's <laughs> like, Lessa, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, one thing I will say positively <laughs> about this. Okay. Is I liked how much power Lessa had over 
herself and the story mm -hmm. in terms of the plot. Mm -hmm. She would go and do her own thing yeah. and disobey Flar. Yeah. I liked that. Yeah, I did too. It was consistent with her character. They establish her as this, like, ruthless, cunning, patient woman mm -hmm. um, who did, like, devious and trickster-like things to yeah. overthrow facts. Yeah. And she even has, like, this telepathic power to influence to, people's emotions. Yeah, and she also has the ability to talk to all dragons. Yeah, which Most is important. people can only talk to their own. And she keeps that secret. Mm -hmm. Because I felt like there was going to be a point in the story when she's like, Flar is basically keeping me hostage. He's having sex with me when I don't want to, when I'm like yes. feel compelled to because my dragons are having sex, and I'm gonna use this information that I can communicate with his dragon against him. Yeah. I was like, ooh, please, can we have that mm -hmm. moment when she gets her sweet revenge yeah. on another facts? Like yeah. that's who Flar is to me in my I eyes. I know, I agree. And but in her worse, internal monologue, she's like, I'm not gonna tell him just for the look on his face when I do tell him. Yeah. And if she didn't, I'd be like, yes, queen. Yeah. This yeah. is a horrible relationship. <laughs> yeah, I would much rather and have her And all the men around you are stupid and controlling. And sexist. And yes. this book felt very Stockholm Syndrome-y to me. Yeah, it did. Like, even at the end, when she is separated from Flar for a while, she's like, I miss him so much, but I knew when I got back, he would shake me. I was like, why? I was like, what? It's bad, Maybe dude. this book is just a comment on abusive relationships. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. It's Who not knows? a Dragon Rider book. It's a cry for help. Yeah. <laughs> well, we sh probably shouldn't postulate externally on people we don't, or events no, we don't understand. No, I know I shouldn't. This book it was just It could just be a skill issue where she's a wonderful writer. But she can't write romance. That can't write romance. There's no romance. There's zero. It's... It's... Yeah, it's so bad. so bad. Yeah, there are times when Flar physically punches her in the face to keep her from crying. I'm not joking. You're not exaggerating either. I'm that not exaggerating. actually what happens in the book. And it's seen as like this, oh, he cares about her so much. When it's like, if you're like a significant, significant other, other is traumatic, crying on the verge of tears, do you seriously think punching them in the face is going to help? No, no one. <laughs> no, 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 no. In no way, in no situation, in nothing. Yeah, it's weird, oh. man. He shakes her, screams at her, tells her, never disobey me. Don't do that again. Yeah. And she's in love with him for it. And she keeps disobeying yeah. him to, like, save the day. And she does. She mm -hmm. does the right things. Mm -hmm. But she's terrified to go back to Flar. Because she knows he's going to hurt her. He's going to abuse her. <sighs> and I don't he does understand. shake her. But it's more like he's doing it in front of other strangers. So he's, like, holding him back from yeah, punching her yeah, in the face yeah, for he, disobeying him. He shakes him. her and then he's like... Oh, there's people around. <laughs> and she's like, I told you he would shake me. Yeah, she literally says, what? I'm so confused, you guys. Okay, so we can go over this, the final part of the book, very briefly, because mm -hmm. the book itself ends super quickly. It, it, it ends prematurely, too, in my opinion. Yeah. So another reason why I kind of ducked out of paying attention to this story, the mm -hmm. last act, was because I just don't like time travel in books. Or it stories. Kinda, it just kind of defeats the purpose of the book. Even if it has a good cost, uh -huh. then it feels like a cop out. Yeah. An easy way to solve the problem. Yeah. And a lot of the problems in this book feel like easy ways to solve the problem. Yes. I would say the first act, the way they deal with facts, I didn't have a deal with. A yeah, problem with I thought that. that was interesting. I thought it was good enough. And there's a lot more political intrigue and social uh, work around to the problems. And too. world building mysteries. Mm -hmm. I think that was my primary driver through this whole yeah. book. Yeah. I was just interested in the world building. <laughs> Tell me what the threads are. <laughs> yeah. Why can't we have grass growing inside yeah. our villages? That's interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. What can the threads do with that? I don't know. Yeah. I should keep reading to find out. Yeah. The time travel thing, they do have valid problems that they have to overcome. Mm -hmm. But if I'm being honest, I was like half paying attention at this point. Oh, yeah, me too. I was like, I was like, oh, I got to record my podcast soon. I got to hurry up this. <laughs> yeah, I was not invested in the story. No. I had lost complete faith in the characters. Um, and you could you could also see what the solution was. Yeah. Like, it was obviously obvious how they were going to solve it. So why keep reading if you know what's going to happen kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Lessa accidentally figures out that the dragons can teleport through time. Mm-hmm. So the dragons can teleport through space. They've always done that. That's how they're so dominant and powerful. Yeah. You just have to think really hard about the place you want to go, and then mm, you show up. Yeah. Um, and Lessa pictures her home, Ruatha, when it was first invaded, and mm -hmm. she accidentally travels back in time. 
She comes back to the present and Flar freaks out, shakes her, screams yes. at her, says never disobey me again. It's this really tender moment yeah. between I, those two. I, I just was like, wow, I was falling in love for I was them. like, relationship goals. Yes. <laughs> um, and once she discovers that you can travel back in time, all the other dragons can do it. Yeah. And so they're like, we're not prepared for the threads. We need to go back in time, get the help of all these other kingdoms from the past to mm -hmm. help us. Because there's a poem about how all the dragons disappeared one day. Mm-hmm. And it gives you, the poem gave you details about yeah. where those dragons were, those places. Yeah. I like I liked the use of the ballads in the poems. So I thought I. it was interesting. I thought that was cool too. Once again, that's a world building yeah. thing. Right? It's the only thing she's good at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic. Yeah, but she could use an extra beta reader maybe for the romance specifically. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so too. Um, it was so bad that it just soured everything else for me. Yeah. Um, anyway... The banner that has this critical information is held at Les's home in Ruatha. She recognize it, recognizes it, of course. Mm -hmm. And so on the eve of the threads attacking her planet, mm -hmm. um, she travels back in time 400 turns. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we don't know what the cost of that will be. It'll make you super sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she gets she gets like... She gets really sick. sleepy. Yeah, she, she gives them like a coma kind of for a couple weeks. Yeah. And she convinces everyone mm -hmm. back in time to travel to the future to help defeat the Threat of the Threads. Something else, they, they she's like, I'm a time traveler. And they're like, okay. <laughs> they don't question it at all. Yeah, she's like, I'll prove it. And they're like, you don't need to. Yeah, we trust you. <laughs> and then she's like, you sure? You're sure you'll come with me? And they're like, it sounds like fun. <laughs> they're like, Let's all we leave just our beat our behind. Threads 20 years ago. We've been so bored. <laughs> yeah. Also, what stops these kingdoms from just going back in time again? Returning home after they that's, defeat the threat. That's the issue with time travel. I know. It has all these paradoxical things. Yes. That I don't want to bother figuring out, frankly. Mm -mm. Like, I don't care enough to mm -mm. poke holes into the plot yeah. at this point. Yeah, there's enough already. There <laughs> probably kidding. are. I just don't care. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. really, it functions mm -hmm. as a plot. I just hate time travel as an explanation yeah. for how you save the day. I kind of do, too. I'd so be interested to see how it, uh, throughout the series, how it ends up. Yeah. How it gets resolved. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, not <laughs> enough to read it. Sorry. No, I'm not either. <laughs> um, should we talk about what the threads are? Yeah. What are they? What's the grand reveal? They're like little, like, fungus spores that fall from the sky. Mm-hmm. And then if they touch the ground, they burrow really deep and kill all the plants. Yep. Um, that's it. And how the dragons defeat the threads? Fire breath. And what do the dragon riders do? Get burnt by the fire breath and the fungus. They don't <laughs> help. They literally just get injured. Oh no, sometimes they'll hold a rock for the for the dragon to eat to get the fire breath. A fire rock. Yeah, fire yeah. stone. Okay, so I kind of like the speculative uh, biology stuff there. I do too. Dragons, dragons breathe have to... phosphorus breath. Yeah, in order, in order to make it flame, flamey. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, they have to eat fire stones to cause a chemical reaction in their stomach acid and with their yeah. phosphorus breath to breathe fire. I thought that was cool. I did too. Um, but they did have satchels of rocks on their bodies, so they still didn't need the riders. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> You'd think the dragons would be like, petty human, sit under the rock and stay here. We'll take care of this. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't super interesting. No. It was this... Great world building mystery that she yeah. established at the beginning. I was so invested in it. And then when we finally found out that the threads are just like, oh, it's like this weird rain. I was like, that's it? There's yeah. no monsters? There's no, no aliens? No. <sighs> <sighs> at least, I mean, in, uh, I know I'm a, I love my crowd pleasing books, right? Mm -hmm. Someone could read this and be like, oh, the writing is so good. I didn't understand it. It must uh, be uh, excellent. Yes. I prefer something like Ascendant. By mm -hmm. Michael R. Miller. Mm -hmm. Great world building, great characters, a good, like, middle grade style romance. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Understandable, readable. Mm -hmm. And the threats the dragons face are real. Yeah. They it's feel, not just flying mushroom. Yeah. It's gigantic <laughs> bugs. Yeah. And you can't defeat them unless you kill the hive queen. Yeah. Like, it's way more That intriguing. makes more sense. It's way, yeah. And then you have to learn these magical powers to mm -hmm. kill the bugs, right? Here, it's like, uh, there's just none of that. It made me uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable and sad. It made me extremely sad. uncomfortable. <laughs> the writing is beautiful. Yeah. 
there's maybe too much in, of an emphasis on like, I'm trying to impress you with how many different words I know. Yeah. And I'm obviously being a cynic by saying that. Yeah. I understand I just also, that's an unfair assessment. I also just really, really want to know why it's so sexist. Yeah. I want to know why. Me too. <laughs> and saying that it's like, oh, it's a secondary world. Like we live in a sexist society. It's the fact that Lesser reacts to it, like in a positive way. Yeah. And this story doesn't feel like it's yes. a commentary on Stockholm no, syndrome or an abusive relationship. It doesn't. It feels like, oh yeah, this is a normal, healthy relationship between a man and a woman. It's not, you guys. If you are in a relationship like this, get out. Yeah. Uh, you're in trouble. Get out. Oh my goodness gracious. I hate Flar. He's more of a villain than Fax. He is more of a villain than Flax. <laughs> Flax? Fax! Sorry. Sorry. I, I so knew that many. I was going to make that mistake, but watching you make it was just beautiful. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Flower Floor Flax. Yes. Oh, this book like. also doesn't pass the Bechdel, Bechdel test. Bechdel test. It doesn't. Nope. So that's also an indicator. Well, I would disagree. I think it does. There is a character, the librarian, right? Menorah. Menorah. Every time they talk, it's about a man. Are you sure? Yes. Really? Yes, I was keeping track because I was like, whoa. Okay. I thought they were talking about r rice. <laughs> um, yeah, but they're talk they talk about Ragul. She's mm. saying you have to take care of this because Ragul's not going to. Ah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's still about a man. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, you could also, I could see people... Uh, devil to have a kid using like the Game of Thrones excuse like mm -hmm. it's a harsh world and it does feel like a harsh world yeah well I mean even but even so we get another character Kylara and every time it's about how Kylara is trying to get into Fla Fla Flower's pants yeah and she hates her because she's so pretty and Lessa she's is so jealous she's a womanizer Kylara. oh my gosh uh -huh. yeah it's pretty egregious <laughs> it sucks because I had such things... high hopes I know if they've been 20% less heavy-handed on the stuff I didn't like, I would really like the book. Yeah, it's I think just so too, too. It's just too much of what I don't like. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I don't care what other people think. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to go on Reddit and look at, look at how well it's no, received. No, don't do that. <laughs> that will make you hate yourself. <laughs> go on Goodreads. You should avoid that. Yeah. I'm sure it's rated highly. Probably. I'm sure it is. But Not by me. No, not by me either. Sorry. We this gave is... it a good old college try. Yeah. Isn't that what people say? Yeah. I didn't try very hard in college, so I don't know why that's a colloquialism. I don't know either. Yeah. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> Is this one of your favorite books? No. Would you recommend it? No. Oh. I don't think I would. I think there are better Dragon Riders that we've read this month. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm so sorry. I think this is the first book I won't recommend. Wow. Sorry, Dragonfly. Sorry, Anne McCaffrey. Is this one of your favorite books? We might have to kick you off the podcast. <laughs> no. Would you recommend it? No. Yes! <laughs> I really wouldn't. Unless you're... <laughs> I don't know. Unless you love reading classic epic fantasy yeah. and you want historical context, mm -hmm. I've always been curious about this book just for that reason. Yeah, well, and... And now I know. And it's fun to do a dragon rider and read all sorts of different types yeah. of Dragon Rider books, too. It's fun to see... Yeah, it is. How wide I really that, enjoyed that. Yeah, how wide this genre really is. Yeah. It's cool. If you want a good Dragon Rider book, we will recommend it to you on our tier list episode. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and a comment and a subscribe. Please comment if you've read this book and if you liked it. I'm so curious. Please yeah. tell us why you liked it. Yeah. Okay. And tell us what we missed and yeah, if we're wrong yeah. because we're Please dumb. Please do. Yeah. Uh, I definitely felt stupid reading this. <laughs> I did um, too. But I'm a woman, so... True. You know, I'm surprised I could even read it. Right. I mean, <laughs> I am too, frankly. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But that's... Never mind. We're done talking yep. about this thing. Thank, Thank you, you for so watching. Much. Goodbye. Bye. Oh my God. <laughs>